Hello students and welcome to writing workshop lesson for Monday, November 30th, 2020. This is Ms. Phillips and thank you for joining me. The materials you will need for today are the writer's notebook page 5.4, your writing journal and a pencil. The writer's notebook five, page 5.4 lists your thesis statement and the facts to support your thesis statement. This is the plan that you already created last Friday Sorry, the, the Friday before Thanksgiving break. If you don't have these supplies, go ahead and pause the video lesson and collect them now and then come back to press play. Okay, now that you're back, let's go with the objectives for today. I will explain organizational strategies for writing. We will recognize the organizational plan needed for a persuasive editorial and you will re revisit your plan and continue drafting. So today we're going to revisit the plan that you already started before Thanksgiving break. When we left off, you were discussing the prompt. Think about what it means that people have different points of view about caring for the earth, depending on what they know and what they think is important. You are tasked to write an editorial for your local newspaper about an environmental issue that you feel strongly about. Keep in mind that some people will feel differently about this issue. Be sure to begin with a strong opening sentence. State a clear thesis. Include strong supporting details and end with a powerful conclusion. We were discussing this prompt and we started drafting our ideas for our editorials individually. You decided on a topic and you came up with a thesis statement and researched facts to support your thesis statement. Writers. Many different organizational strategy. There are many different organizational strategies to plan your writings. You as writers are starting on a journey to write this editorial piece. When a sailor decides to take a journey, he doesn't simply push his boat into the water, hike up the sail, and then wait to see what happens. Sailors have a planned course ahead of time. When we write, we should aim to do the same thing. We draw a sort of map for ourselves of what we intend so that as we journey through adding lots of details and words, we can stay on track. I have a few different ways to organize, organize written in this anchor chart here. As you can see, there are many different organizational structures that you can use to plan. The writer's notebook page 5.4 is a type of organizational structure as well. You could use that organizational structure, or you can choose a different organizational structure that we've discussed here today. I want you to take a look at this first organizational structure called boxes and bullet bo boxes and bullets. The idea for boxes and bullets is to extract the main idea here and then list your supporting details here. What you would do for each paragraph of your editorial is you would have the main idea or the main point you wanna get across and the research or supporting ideas here that you found that support your claim. For cause and effect, this is one that's generally, um, can be used for, as persuasive, but not always. Um, you would find a cause is basically something that produces an event or condition, and an effect is what results from an event or condition. The purpose of cause and effect is to determine how something relates to another, so what, what causes something else. So in this case, you could use cause and effect in an example for how to save the environment. If I was writing about using reusable water bottles, I would say that my claim for that we need all need to use reusable water bottles to help the environment is that millions of water bottles are put into the landfills each year. And the effect would be the negative effect on the environment. If you look at this type of organizational structure, it's called problem and solution. There is a problem and here is the solution to fix it. You can even go further to state that 
the research behind why this solution will help this problem or so make the solution for the problem. All right, compare and contrast. Compare and contrast and pros and cons are kind of similar. Compare and contrast, you take one side of the argument, you take the other side of the argument and you compare the two and you contrast how the two and how they're different. Pro, with pros and cons, pros and cons is a good useful strategy and organizational structure for determining or for expressing persuasion. You have a topic or a thesis statement that you've already created. You can actually, actually list the pros of why it is important and you can list the cons, the only negative side effects of using your your ideas. An example, as we read the previous story or mentor text covering um, why reusable water bottles were important for sports teams to use, we came across some pros and cons within that, that editorial. They stated things like, why the wa the reusable water bottles are important and the pros for those. They also stated the op oppositional ideas that the water bottles take more time, that the water bottles, you know, need to be rewashed, various things like that. But the writer went on to support why the water bottles were still a good idea. The water bottles didn't take much time to fill up. That was another pro. So it actually knocked out those cons. But the writer used the pros and cons in order to express that. Okay. What type of genre are we writing in? Okay. We're writing a persuasive piece. What do you know about how the genre is organized? I want you to take a moment to look over your plan. Okay. Look over your plan. We're writing a persuasive editorial. You're trying to convince your audience to support your idea and change their thinking about your topic. Look over your original plan on Writer's Notebook page 5.4. Look at how it's structured already in the graphic organizer. Does it look like boxes and bullets, cause and effect, problem, solution? Compare and contrast, pros and cons. What would you like it to look like? Do you want to keep your original format or do you want to try something different? Take a look at some of these graphic organizers that I've listed here. Which one best matches the way your piece will go and how your writing is going to make effect? We're all writing an argumentative persuasive piece, but we can all structure it a little differently to still support our ideas in our thesis statement. All right, now it's your turn. Continue drafting and researching. Use your graphic organizer you already have, page 5.4, or one of the other choices linked in Google Classroom to help you with your plan. Rewrite your plan you've already created down neatly into your new graphic organizer or the same one you're already using. If you need to reword some things, it's fine. Continue researching more facts and add more support to your ideas. Then turn your newly filled in graphic organizer with all the supporting facts that you have found into your teacher.